if you've written Dynamics 365 reports using Visual Studio before, um, then you know that it's a little bit of a, a pain if you're trying to do it using lots of different entities. So you can potentially use multiple data sets. Um, you could also use sub reports, but then it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Your formulas might be a bit of a pain. But what about if you can get all of those rows into just one data set? It's going to make that report a little bit easier to build. So that's where using Jonas Rapp's Fetch XML Builder is going to help us out to actually create that Fetch XML query and then use that to put it into the report. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start out, we're going to create our Fetch XML query. So we're using XRM Toolbox. If you haven't ever used it before, go ahead and down it, down, blah, download it. Query fet, um, X. XRM toolbox. Once you've downloaded it, then come back and you want to open up the Fetch XML Builder. So first thing we're going to do is our report that we're using in this example is going to be a report about accounts. So we go ahead and we pick the entity of account and then we're going to go ahead and select the attributes and we're just going to put a few in here because we're just doing this as an example. We're going to have the account name, uh, we're going to have the account ID, let's go ahead and put in the owner and then maybe let's do the city as well. We'll just put in a few things. So we've picked the entities, great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to do add link entity. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to link to the contacts. I want to find all of the contacts for this specific account. So I'm going to find the relationship of contact, parent, customer ID, account account ID so that's basically showing the link between them now um, if you don't see all of these options then you can see so like I did you can basically expand and make that a little bit larger because sometimes it's not all visible um, depending on the size of your your screen so we've got that the link type we want is we want the outer link what that's basically meaning is if there are accounts that don't have contacts we still want them on the report so we want to make that an outer link saying it's not actually um, uh, important if there's contacts on here or not the alias and all the alias is going to do is it's going to help us out so that when we're looking at all of the fields available once we've put the query into the, um, the data set what we're going to find tra challenging is if we don't use aliases, then we'll just see a whole bunch of things like name, um, city, whatever, so that we wouldn't necessarily immediately know whether it's the name of the account, name of um, something else. So we're going to go ahead and give this an alias. Okay. So now that we've added that, we're going to select the attributes and we'll do a similar thing. We'll put in full name. We're going to use the contact ID. Um, we'll go ahead and put in their email address. And we'll go ahead and put in their business phone and their mobile phone. Okay, so now we've got those. So we're going to come back, oh, excuse me, come back up to the account. We're going to do another link entity. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, link to cases. Uh, cases in the database are incidents, so we're going to do incident.customerID. I'm going to pick that one and again link type is going to be outer because if there aren't any cases then that's fine, we don't care. And then we're going to give it an alias of cases. And again I'm going to select some attributes and I want the case ID. Let's do the case number title and let's go ahead and do the status and status reason and one more we'll do the uh, opportunities so we we'll scroll down to opportunities and opportunity.customerid perfect and we'll change the link type to outer now, what we can do is, as we've been building this up, uh, oh, sorry, one more thing, let's just select some attributes, and we'll do the topic, and we'll do the owner, and we'll do the opportunity ID. Oh, and let's do a bit of estimated revenue and maybe estimated close date. So now that we've picked those, if we click here to view, we can actually see the fetch XML query that's been built. 
um, we can then go ahead and we can execute that and that will then run the fetch XML. Be careful when you do this if you've taken out the um, the number of um, records so it sets it by 50 to 50 by default. If you've taken that out just be careful if you've got um, a ton of records in there you don't want to be running this. So this now as you can see along the top we've got the attributes from the account and then if we scroll along, we've because we've put that alias in, we can see there's the contacts.mobile phone, contacts.fullname and so on. And if I keep scrolling through, there's the cases and then any opportunities as well. All right, so we're going to go back to the fetch XML. Um, we're going to go ahead and copy that. And then we'll start and look at our report. Okay, so we've got a report that we've set up, we've added in the data source um, and we've started a, a new report and we're going to go ahead and add in the data set. So we'll add the data set, um, we're using the data set that's embedded in the report and then we're just going to go ahead and paste in the query that we've taken from the Fetch XML Builder in XRM Toolbox. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. Yep, so we'll use the credentials we've got, hopefully it will not prompt me to log in again. Any Awesome, so we've been able to connect. We've got all of the fields over here on the right hand side that we've added into the report. So the first thing we're gonna do is start off and we're gonna go ahead and insert a table. And we don't want to use the details row, but in order to be able to add a group, we've got to have something in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the name of the account in here. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the bottom to the row groups and I'm going to go ahead and add a group and put in a parent group. I'm going to group by the account ID and let's go ahead and add a header and a footer. Okay, so I don't want this column so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that column. And also, I'm not like I said, I'm not going to use the details row so I'm going to go ahead, remove that and I'm going to change the group properties and I'm going to go ahead and hide that. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put in along the top our account fields that we want to display. So I'm going to do the um, name, the owner and the city. OK, now I'm going to take these out and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click and I'm going to do insert insert row inside, excuse me, inside group above and I'm going to put in my um, headers for this specific thing. Okay. And then what I can also do is I can change the background color. So let's make that black and then let's go ahead and let's make the color white. There we go. All right, so I can um, format that however I want to. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come down to the bottom and I'm going to do add group and I'm going to do child group. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do the um, contacts. So what I want to do is I want to group by contact ID and I'm going to add a group header and I'm going to add a group footer. Now it's going to add in this extra um, extra column, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that column. Now here's where I'm going to go ahead and add in the contacts name, and let's put in the contacts um, uh, phone and then also the email address. Now notice as you start to do this, it's going to be trying to add those headers in, so you're, you're going to have to keep um, deleting those unfortunately, but that's just how it is. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, insert row, and I'm going to do outside group, but above, and here is when I'm going to put contact name, phone, and email. Okay, so then what I can do is I can put in a background color and again if I wanted to I can go ahead and I can change the color of the text as well. Okay so 
Now what I need to do is I want to have subsequent um, record types or entities listed underneath that. So because I want to go um, the account name and then the list of contacts and then the list of cases and then the list of opportunities, what I'm going to do is I need to add any additional entities as an adjacent group. So I'm going to come down to the, the contacts that we added. I'm going to do add group and I'm going to do add adjacent after. Okay. Now notice that this one doesn't have the option for me to be adding in any headers or footers. So this I'm going to uh, do it by case, so by incident ID. I'm going to click OK. OK, so now what I'm going to do is the cases, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to add in a row. So insert row and I'm going to do insert row outside group above. So let's put in my cases ticket number, cases title and let's do the state code. Okay. So let's again remove those headers from the top and also we'll go ahead and change the colour of this. Okay. And then finally we'll add one more and again we'll do an adjacent after and with this one we're going to do the opportunity ID, there it is, perfect and again we're going to do insert row outside, gr boo, outside group above and we're going to go ahead and we'll add the opportunity name and we'll go ahead and add the opportunity ID, uh, sorry the owner and we'll also add the estimated value and we'll put in our headers and we'll go ahead and do one more and we'll pick this horrible colour <laughs> and we'll go again with white All right, so as you can see, um, this is the contact one looks a little bit different because that one allowed us to have a header and a footer. So we also just want to make sure that our footer is hidden so that we don't have um, too many rows after that. But this is how you can go ahead and put in multiple entities onto a report with just having one data set without having to have sub reports without having to have multiple data sets this will allow you to achieve that so hopefully this video helped and you can see ways in which you can achieve this um, and uh, hopefully this will allow you to create your own reports